I gotta be totally honest. If you're not watching the House of Commons, you are missing out. Out. Yes, Pierre Polyev does an excellent job of absolutely destroying Justin Trudeau. Trudeau throws these tantrums, he starts yelling and wailing his arms, and that's all awesome to witness, right? It just shows how incompetent and how unreliable Justin Trudeau really is. But aside from that main stuff, you got the other MPs trying to make a name for themselves, and they throw out these incredible zingers, such as calling a liberal MP... Ken, you know, like from Barbie and Ken, and uh, there was a bit of a hot mic in this video, as you're going to find out. I don't want to spoil nothing, but I do want to encourage you to stick around for the entire video so you can have an awesome laugh. As well as before we get into it, I want to encourage everyone to smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't yet already. It does really help grow the channel. We blew past 100,000 subscribers, and next in line is 200,000. And the only way we can get there is if you guys as a community come together and subscribe, but more importantly, turn on that little bell notification so you can notified of these videos but the live streams that also happen sit back relax and i hope you enjoy this clip as much as i do here we go the honorable member from regina leuven this coming from the liberal member who said if canadians want programs they should vote liberal come on mr speaker <laughs> For years, this liberal enemy government is not worth the cost let's go warren Canadians are finding it harder and harder to make ends meet and we all know that at four o'clock today they're going to table a dumpster fire budget this prime minister simply is not worth the cost the question is will he finally axe attacks on farmers so canadians can put food on their table. Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Natural Resources and Energy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On this side of the House, we are focused on ensuring affordability for Canadians moving forward and addressing the climate issue. The price on pollution is an affordability mechanism. Eight out of ten families get more money back. The PBO has underlined that. 300 economists across this country have underlined that. Mr. Speaker, every one of those MPs over there ran on the platform that included a price on pollution. They, they had, this is the height of hypocrisy. And my goodness, their plan is only to, to take money away from poor people and to let the planet burn. That doesn't even make any sense. Member from Regina, Leuven. Climate Ken can say whatever he wants, but they are 62nd out of 67 countries. Oh, he's going to get in trouble for that. The Honourable uh, Member is an experienced member in this House and understands that we cannot uh, refer to other members other than their titles that they have. Oh, yeah. Order! <laughs> it's kind of funny, this climate can. Sound remember to start from start from the top and to avoid such language. He's not Ken. Ken's handsome. Mr. Speaker. <laughs> This prime minister is not worth the cost. They see it time and time again when they. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? <laughs> so he said he's not Ken. Ken is handsome. Avoid such language. <laughs> he's not Ken. Ken's handsome. <laughs> This prime minister is not worth the cost. They see it time and time again when they go to the grocery store. And we know that our farmers are paying more. By 2030, when this Holy is shit, that's funny. implemented at $170 a ton, farmers will be paying $1 billion in taxes. So my question was again, on their four o'clock budget dumpster fire, will they ask the tax of farmers so Canadians can put food on the table? That was an open mic, yeah. A hot mic. I don't think he meant for us to pick that up. Mr. Speaker, I'm not sure if the Honourable <laughs> Member is actually trying to insult me or actually give me a compliment. But, uh, but, but I would say that it's important in this chamber that we actually use facts, that we are not misleading Canadians. Eight out of ten Canadians get more money back. That is underlined by 300 economists in this, uh, in this country. And to be honest, it's underlined by the Premier of his province. The, when Scott Moe came here and actually testified, what he said is they looked at all alternatives and they were all too expensive. Well, that's absolutely the right thing because we have put in place something that actually does address affordability, reduces carbon emissions on that side of the house. They don't believe in climate change and they act. Sit down, climate Shrek. The 
Honourable Member from Hamilton Centre. This past weekend, I met with over 100 youth from Hamilton who told me they don't even know how they're going to be able to pay rent, let alone ever be able to afford to buy a home in their lifetime. And a recent Spectator News report confirms that Hamilton's rent is out of control and quickly outpacing Canadian cities. And under the Liberals' watch, life has only gotten better for wealthy developers. And they're raking it in... The Honourable uh, Member oh. from Hamilton Centre, usually I can hear quite well. I'm having difficulty hearing him today. I'm going to ask all Honourable Members, in particular the member from Prince George Peace River, Northern Rockies, Zimmerman. to uh, only take the microphone when he's or take the floor when he's recognised by the Speaker. I'm going to ask the Honourable, uh, give the Honourable Member 20 seconds to finish uh, his question. The Honourable Member. Under the Liberals' watch, life has only gotten better for big money developers and they're raking it in while the rents double for Canadians. So why are the Liberals refusing to take on corporate developers and failing to build non-market affordable housing now? Yeah. Where's his Palestinian scarf? Order. He didn't bring it today? The Honourable Member, for, uh, the Honourable Minister, rather, for Housing, Infrastructure and Communities. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I have great respect for the Honourable Member and thank him for his advocacy to build more homes in Hamilton. But he may not be aware that we recently invested $93.5 million in his city to help speed up the construction of up to 9,000 new homes. Mr. Speaker, in addition, we are putting money on the table. It's going to help speed up the development. But if his concern is about building non-market housing, I'm pleased to point to the billion dollars we invested in the fall economic statement to build more affordable housing. The hundreds of millions we're building, using to build more cooperative housing. The $4 billion we're using to deal with the needs of urban, rural and northern uh, communities to serve Indigenous peoples. We're going to build housing for the most vulnerable. We're going to build housing for everyone. I don't know who everyone is because it's certainly not Mr. for Speaker, every Indigenous person. People in Winnipeg make up nearly 75% of the unhoused population. Almost 90% are sleeping outdoors or living in encampments. The Liberals' inadequate response is costing lives. And the Conservative leader, he cut 8,000 affordable units when he was the minister in charge. Clearly not a Conservative priority. In today's budget, will the Liberals commit to increasing funding for affordable housing with rent geared to income and get serious about ending homelessness? The Honourable Minister for Housing, Infrastructure and Communities. Mr. Speaker, I thank the Honourable Member for her concern and she's right to point out the desperate need of so many communities across country when it comes to building more affordable housing. She's right to point out the need for increased investment to support the needs of Indigenous people who remain unhoused. That's why we put more than $4 billion on the table to support the needs of Indigenous peoples in community and an additional $4.3 billion to deal with the needs of Indigenous peoples who live in urban, rural and northern environments. On top of that, Mr. Speaker, we've invested more than $120 million to build thousands of homes in her city. We're going to keep doing what we need to build more affordable housing. And one point of correction, it was 800,000 units that the opposition leader lost while he was housing minister. Didn't you lose a million people? That's where we're going to end today's video, folks. Love to know what you guys think down below in the comments. Did this give you a good laugh in the same way that it gave me? Please let me know down below on your way out. Again, I'd like to encourage you guys to smash like button, subscribe if you haven't yet already. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.